Hello, I'm JW, and this time I'm going to have a look at ring circuits. Now, it's no actual secret that I do not like ring circuits, and quite frankly, it's my opinion that they should have been deleted from the regulations a long time ago. But nevertheless, they haven't been, and they are in there. And even if they were deleted tomorrow, the fact remains that there's going to be loads of them still installed that are going to be out there. So let's have a look at these things and how they're actually installed. Now, uh, ring circuits are something which is pretty much only used in the UK. It's a rather uh, unusual design, shall we say, in terms of uh, cable sizing. And uh, it's not the sort of thing you would generally want to be installing as a new circuit, unless there was some extremely compelling reason to do so. And uh, you'd certainly have a job to find one of those. So uh, let's uh, have a look and see what kind of a shambles these things actually are. So ring circuits then. Now these used to be called ring mains. They're not called that anymore. They're called ring circuits or ring final circuits. But plenty of books things still refer to these as ring mains. They were called that uh, some considerable time ago, but uh, that term is not used for these anymore. Ring main now refers to the cabling outside in the street where you would have uh, a loop of cabling which brings the power to your house. But uh, that's a completely unrelated and separate topic. So uh, ring circuits then. Now I'll say these are typically only used in the UK and it's one of these bizarre things which has uh, existed for a very long time and it really has no purpose existing anymore. And a ring circuit, unlike pretty much every other circuit, starts at the consumer unit. So uh, that's uh, fairly similar to what we saw previously. And this is only used for socket outlets. And so it starts here at the consumer unit and it will go to the first socket outlet on the wall. And as with other circuits, you would have obviously more than one. So here's another one. And you can continue on to another socket outlet. And even continuing on to a fourth one. And that one seems to be rectangular rather than square. But this is basically uh, a standard radial circuit, as we saw in a previous video. So it comes out of the consumer unit and goes to each of the sockets in turn. And the big difference with a ring circuit, as you may have guessed, is that when you get to the end of it, well, there is no end because the cable here comes out of here and actually goes back to the consumer unit. Hence the ring circuit, as it's a ring of cabling. And this is a really fundamental point about this in that it has to be a complete and continuous ring of cable starting here and actually going around and returning back to the very same place that it started from. Now ring circuits are uh, one particular type, so it's only used for socket outlets, and there's actually only one type defined in the regulations. And uh, this type is uh, on a modern circuit breaker in a consumer unit, would have a 32 amp circuit breaker, or miniature circuit breaker, or MCB as they're still commonly called. And the cabling size here would typically be twin and earth, although so it could be singles. And the cabling size would be 2.5 square millimetres. And if using the twin and earth, the uh, protective conductor inside is typically smaller. That's actually 1.5 square millimetres. Now the point about this particular arrangement is that uh, 2.5 square millimetre wires are not rated for 32 amps. 32 amps through a 2.5 square millimetre cable would actually cause it to be overloaded and overheated. So you might wonder what on earth is the point of having uh, small size wires on a protective device which is too big for them. And this is the whole point of having the ring here. So 2.5 millimetre wire is typically rated in the region of about 26 amps, absolute maximum. Pretty obviously that's a lot less than 32, but because you've got two cables effectively going to every point, so starting here, this socket here is connected with two, and they've got two here and two there. Then the current is actually shared amongst the two wires. So uh, the fact that the cable is only rated to 26 amps around maximum doesn't actually matter in this case because uh, you've actually got two going to each point. Now the reality is that the current is not going to be shared equally because it depends on the length of the various cables and the resistance. But nevertheless, this has all been worked out by various people a long time ago. So that, uh, provided the load is reasonably well distributed, then you're going to get uh, less than 26 amps in both parts of the ring. Now, so this is pretty much the only one that's defined. On an older system with a fuse, then the difference would be it would be probably a 30 amp fuse. K would still be pretty much the same size. And there was an imperial equivalent to that, but again, it was uh, pretty much the same size of copper wiring. 
and I say the 30 amp fuse rather than the 32, but uh, that's a minor difference. Now there are no other ring circuits to find in the regulations and they're only used for socket outlets and let's say quite frankly they uh, should have been deleted from there a long time ago. But uh, when you actually come to installing these things then uh, the wiring is of course reasonably straightforward. So your neutral would come from the uh, consumer unit into your first socket and then from there to the second socket and from there to the third one and the fourth one and then when it returns to the consumer unit then it actually goes back into the same neutral bar so here we have the neutral connection inside the consumer unit and both wires go into the same terminal and where you have the socket again both wires are going into the same terminal on the back there and obviously it's going to be marked N for neutral on the back of the socket And the same deal really for the other conductors, again these are going to be part of the same cable. So the line conductor again would come from the consumer unit and that will be from the circuit breaker. Again that would go through to the first socket and the second one and the third one and the fourth one. That returns to the consumer unit, in that case it would go to the circuit breaker. And again inside the sockets they're going to go to the same L terminal. And here of course you would have your uh, circuit breaker device inside there. And of course finally the uh, earth or the circuit protective conductor would do exactly the same kind of thing. So from the earthing bar in the consumer unit you would have the wires going across to the first socket and then the next K would continue through a hole there into the second one and again from there to the third socket and from there of course to the fourth one and from there all the way back to the consumer unit and joining back to the other one where it started and you have your earthing bar in there and this would be the terminal in the socket marked with an E so with this and this one and of course this one. And these would typically be say your twin and earth cabling, so that's all one cable. It just happens to be the three individual conductors contained within. Now potential problems that can occur with this is that if one of the wires becomes broken or loose or wire falls out of socket or whatever, then the thing will continue to work. But then you've got the problem is that the cable again is only rated to 26 amps, so if there was a break here, potentially you can actually overload the cabling of the circuit because uh, there's no dual path for the uh, current to actually flow now. So uh, testing on these is absolutely essential to make sure that the ring is complete. And that applies to all three conductors, the line neutral and the earth as well. And so unfortunately, if one of these becomes broken or loose or whatever at any point on the circuit, the whole thing continues to work and you wouldn't actually notice any difference. The only way to find out there's a problem is to actually test the thing. And this is a fairly fundamental problem with this design in that uh, on every other kind of circuit, if either the line or the neutral became disconnected then stuff is going to stop working immediately and people are going to notice but on this design it's going to continue working but of course you are potentially overloading some or all of the cabling because obviously you've only got a uh, 26 amp rated cable on a 32 amp rated device. Now this is the uh, basic arrangement and in terms of the number of socket outlets you can have there isn't actually any specific limit you could put 10 on here or 50 or whatever generally it comes down to common sense now there was an old regulation which uh, generally represented the number of outlets by the floor area that the circuit covered and generally that was uh, 100 square yards or later on that got changed to 100 square meters I think 75 was mentioned somewhere but that's uh, no longer actually a regulation there is a recommendation in the back of the uh, regulations for that but I say it's only a suggestion it really comes down to common sense when these things were designed in the 1940s yes that's how old they are then it was intended that you'd have one ring circuit for the entire house and it was designed in such a way that it would save uh, materials because of course previously you had a fuse box somewhere with uh, individual wires and cables going out to every socket in each room whereas this of course saved quite a lot of cabling because then instead of uh, say 10 or more wires going out to say 10 rooms it was just a single loop which went all the way around and of course being a smaller size you could actually get away with using a lot less copper 
Compared to circuits today, though, that's completely irrelevant because if you wanted to convert this into two radials, all you have to do is remove this cable here, and then you've just got two radial circuits, so you actually use less cable than the ring itself. But of course, in the 1940s, that wasn't a consideration. So, uh, number of sockets you can have is not particularly limited, so it just comes down to common sense. If this was supplying a load of bedrooms, then you can have one circuit pretty much for the whole thing. On the other hand, if it's going to go to a kitchen, you might not want to share that with the rest of the property because kitchens these days have a considerable number of high powered appliances in there. But uh, nevertheless, uh, it really just comes down to the things that are likely to be plugged in there. And say so it was fairly common until fairly recently to have the entire house on the single 32 amp circuit. Now, there are a couple of other things you can do with these. If you want to actually extend the ring, as in add additional sockets, then the best way is to break into whatever part of the ring there is and simply extend the ring itself. So you could in fact add another socket in here. So it's still on the main ring itself, it's just adding them in at whatever point is convenient. But in many cases that's not convenient. And what's easier is to add what's called a spur. And a spur it would typically be taken from say one of the existing sockets, so you might want to put a socket over here. And instead of taking both the wires to that, which would involve rather messy connections in the back here, because one would have to come out and then you have to loop back to this one somehow, what you can actually do is connect a wire to the back of this socket and just bring it over here like that. That will be then called a spur. And it's only supplied by a single cable. However, in this case, it's not actually going to be overloaded because you've only got a single socket here on the end of it. Bear in mind your twin and earth cable typically rated to around 26 amps. If this is a single socket, the plug that goes in here is going to have a 13 amp fuse in it. So the current is limited to 13 amps by virtue of the fact you can only plug in one item. If it was a double socket outlet, then again, not a problem because in theory you could plug in two electric heaters at 13 amps each. But of course, it only adds up to 26. And obviously, that's still within the rating of that single piece of cable. Now, bizarrely, the regulations used to allow either one double or two singles on the end, but now, for some reason, they only allow one double or one single, which seems kind of rubbish, but uh, anyway, that's what they say. So, basically, Spur has one socket on it, and if you wanted more, then you'll have to actually extend the ring, which in this case could be done by moving a piece here and then deleting the cable here altogether. So, again, you've extended it onto the ring there. And you can have several Spurs on there. You could put another one over here if you wanted. And perhaps uh, one from here, if you wanted one over by the uh, side there. And there's no, again, specific limit for that. But pretty obviously, if you're getting to the same number of spurs as there are sockets on the ring, then really it's time to uh, redesign the entire thing. And uh, one other thing which uh, some people seem to get all busted up over, but in fact is completely allowed, is to put a spur directly from the consumer unit and put a socket in there. Now, some people seem to think this is completely unacceptable and not allowed, but in reality, there's no difference connecting it here than there is to any of these sockets here. It's the same 32 amp protective device. There's no difference. It's simply connected to the consumer directly, so you would have three wires going into the circuit breaker and also the neutral and the earth there. Just you would have three on the back of the various sockets. Now, another way to do this is to add a junction box in here and then have a cable going over to a socket. The problem with this is that junction boxes should be accessible, so putting one in and shoving it under the floorboards with laminate flooring and tiling or whatever over the top, not really going to be acceptable because uh, you can't actually get to it afterwards. So generally it's much easier to take it from the back of an existing socket outlet. So that's a quick look at ring circuits. And a quick look because uh, when you actually install one of those, uh, there's a whole load of testing that has to be done which does not apply to other circuits mainly to ensure that the three conductors are in fact in a ring and they haven't been either, say, broken or connected in ways which might appear that there's continuity between the ends, but actually it's not actually a proper ring, it's just some other weird like figure of eight business or whatever, and that testing can be fairly involved. So we'll look at the testing of that in a separate video. I'd say that does take quite a while. Now, I'd say ring circuits are very common in the UK, probably most houses in Britain have still got them. Some people still install the things, but typically it's a job to see why, because they have real no advantages and uh, radio circuits would do just as well. In fact, probably a much better job. And certainly these days, in terms of sort of your average room, other than the kitchen, 
Most rooms do not require a 32 amp circuit putting through them. Most modern equipment, of course, is very low powered. And so even in your uh, front room with your television and game consoles and sky box and all kinds of other equipment, all that stuff's going to be using in probably in the tens or low hundred watts or something. So even if you've got like 10 of those items plugged in, it's only going to be a kilowatt or less. So a 20 amp radio circuit uses the same cable as the uh, ring circuit there, the 2.5 square millimetres. And you could actually put a 25 amp circuit breaker on that if you wanted to. And bearing in mind that uh, this nonsense about saving cable is only based on the original 1940s design compared to the previous system, which was literally a big old fuse box. And a cable from there going out to one socket, typically one in each room. And of course that did use quite a lot of extra cable compared to a ring. But obviously these days you put in, say, a 20 amp radial, which could do probably the whole floor of a uh, moderately sized house. And if you had two radials, that's going to use less cable than ring, because if you take a ring and remove a chunk of cable from it, well, guess what? You've got two radials left over. So uh, all the excuses for having rings really are not valid anymore. And uh, because of the uh, major problem they have in that if one wire is loose or becomes disconnected, it still works where you're over in the cable, not a very good design. And yes, in theory, everything should be tested properly after use, but let's face it, the average uh, DIY wire or somebody just putting in an extra socket is not going to do that or even have the equipment to do it with. So uh, a fairly poor design. So we'll have a look at testing that in a separate video. But uh, until then, thanks for watching.